So let's find out a little bit more uh, from its newly minted managing director and CEO. Hi there, uh, Shri Krishna for Hi. joining us. Shri, may I call you Shri? Of course, of course, you can. Yeah, so thank Shri, you. thank you for joining us on uh, CNBC. And uh, as I said, it's you've just been eight months uh, into your new role at Karnataka Bank, but the bank itself has a huge legacy a rich history and we are standing here in this very interesting museum uh, that you built specially on this occasion. Tell us a little bit about the history of Karnataka Bank and we've got the founding fathers there, a long line of them. Um, a little bit about the founding fathers and really the principles that it's built on. Thank you very much uh, for having me on the show and uh, for doing this, uh, you know, specifically on this huge milestone occasion for Karnataka Bank. So as you know, uh, 1924 is when the bank uh, was founded by the illustrious uh, leaders. And all of them were very simple people, but very knowledgeable people. Mm -hmm. They had knowledge on agriculture, they had knowledge on small businesses. And this is a bank which actually started lending to smaller people, you know, the smaller businesses. So it did not really do the, uh, let's say, the organic way of starting a bank with deposit seeking uh, businesses, etc. So they were actually serving the people. So that was the initial uh, And know, serving intent. the farmers, right? So let's turn to this side of, uh, you know, the, the montage which is here. You, you said 1924 is when it began and thereafter there are several key milestones. So they began by serving farmers and how has the bank sort of, you know, moved on from there? Because its legacy is in Karnataka, right? So this bank has got a very rich legacy. And uh, it has started in Karnataka, remained in Karnataka for a while. But having said that, they started acquiring banks. You know, there were a couple of consolidation moves that the bank had done. They had acquired banks in 1960, two of them. And then over a period of time, actually opened up the branches outside of Karnataka also. So all this is captured. And this, by the way, is a centenary building where you are. And within the centenary building, the entire ground floor has been dedicated to capture the entire history capturing documents such as our first balance sheet to our first articles and memorandum of association to various other documents from our archives which are lying either at the branches or at you know various other offices we That's have put them all together because this is something which is going to remain forever talking about the history of the 100 years but also preparing ourselves for the next 100 years so this is where i think you know this is i mean it's significant for us and also the fact that the four core founders what they actually started off doing is something that we want to continue as a legacy. So, it, as I said, and as you were telling us, you know, it started by, you know, helping farmers, you know, getting them loans. And we've got some very interesting uh, visuals here of dispersal for cattle loan uh, at a branch. And, and so many, uh, you know, there's, there's a goat loan goat picture loan. Yeah, uh, as well. But it, it moved on from there, right? It wasn't just about uh, serving the farmers, also smaller businesses, because Mangalore has a very rich history of uh, entrepreneurship. So Mangalore has actually, is, is, it was a knowledge capital, right? 22 banks originated from this region of uh, Dakshin Karnataka. And there, over a period of time, these banks got consolidated. But having said that, now today, as we speak to you, Karnataka Bank is the only private sector bank, or for, for that matter, the only uh, bank which is standing tall from Karnataka, which is headquarters in Mangalore. Mm -hmm. Now, what it means is that the kind of businesses that the bank has entered into are sustainable one creates an impact because of our 1.3 crore customers base that you know we have the third is the wide variety so we focus on rural and agri we focus a lot on sme and msme mm. we, we focus a lot on entrepreneurship which is like startups where you know the loans we help them to build the businesses so we have been serving families individuals mm -hmm. we've been serving families for education loans for their kids to go abroad or to even go for higher studies in other parts so, of so Canada. don't don't just think of the bank in in terms of a rural setting it's doing so much more um, but uh, you know and and tell me a little bit about uh, you you mentioned a lot about the core values and you know these days uh, with all that's happening in the banking space and with the regulator also coming down hard but Karnataka Bank has always been very focused on, on its core values. Share with us uh, some of that. In fact, uh, if the camera can just pan there, there is a wonderful commandment of, uh, bank, bank, em employee. of, of bank employees. So clearly serving the customer and if you can just go here, uh, it says attend to customers first right 
So uh, very interesting. Uh, smile and greet every customer pleasantly. So I mean, clearly, customer first is would you say is one of its core values? Karnataka Bank is very well known for its superior service culture at the branches, and that's because the starting point, which has been done by the founders and over a period of time continued by all our colleagues uh, across the country. Now the. There are some other unique factors as far as Karnataka Bank is concerned. One is that it is known for responsible banking. Responsibility not only for the bank, but also responsibility when it comes to the customer. Because of this, all the 99 years that we have been existing, we have actually made net profits. All the 99 years, that's one. The second is that, who are the stakeholders? We have to obviously reward the stakeholders. 96 out of the 99 years, we have actually rewarded the stakeholders by paying them dividends. Barring the years of COVID when there was a regulatory compulsion for not declaring dividends. And of course, you are in the centenary building. The adjacent head office building was constructed somewhere in the mid 70s. Mm -hmm. During that time, because of the capex, they had to conserve capital. So that is also the reason that, you know, the bank did not, uh, you know, they declare dividends during the year. But 96 out of the 99 year uh, track record on dividends is also uh, reflecting on the responsibility. So it makes the, the customers bank. happy, it makes its stakeholders happy and it's been keeping the regulator on the right, right side as well. And uh, you know what's fascinating to me as we go through the annals of history uh, here is how the bank has sort of kept up with the times uh, and really tried to evolve and while it's called Karnataka Bank uh, and you were telling me a very interesting story about how it's called Karnataka Bank even before Karnataka was named as a state. 20 years before even Karnataka state was formed, hmm. right? the bank named itself as Karnataka Bank. So that's like, you know, a real foresight, right? That's one part. The second part is about even agri loans. The norms related to uh, priority sector lending, direct agri, all the requirements which are imposed by the regulator. Now those were actually followed even much before such regulations came into being. So that again reflects on the impact and the socio-economic requirement that you know this bank was serving. Right. So very conscious of uh, you know who it was serving, the, the needs of the time, and very interesting as we speak. Uh, though we are in, in the middle of that building, but actually this is the building that we are standing in. Yeah, um, if I can come to the other side, uh, just share with us a little bit about really what this building you know signifies. You have the old corporate building which is next door, but this is the new one which has been built. This building was uh, dedicated to the founders by the current management to make sure that we want to uh, create a milestone whereby we reflect two things. One is that the ground floor where we are currently of, the, of this building is a museum which captures the entire archives, all of the documents as I said, which pertain to Karnataka Bank right from inception. The second part is that what we want to be. We have been known as Karnataka Bank, but Karnataka Bank limits itself in terms of geography. So recently we have launched a campaign where we call ourselves that we are actually Bharat Ka Karnataka Bank. One third of our branches are outside of Karnataka. More importantly, the neighboring states outside Karnataka, Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, each one of them have more than 50 branches. So that means that, you know, we are not bad in every economic pocket in the country, whether it's Gujarat, Delhi, NCR, Punjab, or Madhya Pradesh, UP, uh, for instance, east and northeast, we have branches. So we are serving rural, we are serving uh, retail, we are serving SMEs and MSMEs, and more importantly, we are there for the people to become more entrepreneurial. And this is something that's a culture that we are promoting from Karnataka Bank. Let's find out a little bit more about that story. Shri, I'm going to ask you to take me into the new Karnataka Bank, which is Bharat Ka Karnataka Bank. Let's go ahead, follow me as we talk and find out a little bit more about uh, the legacy of this bank. Karnataka Bank, celebrating 100 years of trust. Media partner, CNBC TV 18. Welcome back to our special showcase where we are celebrating right here in Mangalore 100 years of Karnataka Bank and in the first half we discovered the legacy of Karnataka Bank uh, right from its nascent days in Mangalore and how it's now spread out to be Bharat Ka Karnataka Bank. I have with me uh, Managing Director and CEO uh, Shri here right here with me and Shri now this is the second part of the journey right the first part was about the legacy and the core values which continue to drive the bank 
and now it's about the metamorphosis. What special role does digitization and the digital bank play uh, in as far as the future of Karnataka Bank is concerned? See, one of the key things is the fundamentals of the bank. The fundamentals of the bank, which is the core values, we are not here to destroy that and we want to continue that and the core of the bank will remain. So that I call it as what is the run the bank. Run the bank part, which is run it efficiently, run it more organized, you know, run it, you know, centralized, all those kind of management techniques is something that, you know, we'll be doing. The second part is that we want to grow the bank. Has the bank been really outbound looking, outward looking? So have we created a sales culture? Have we created a product culture in the bank to become more competitive in the market, etc.? That's something that we have introduced in the last about six to eight months, where we have created a sales organization and we have created a product organization. And this is what I call as grow the bank, which is essentially from where we are, building on the core values of the bank, grow the bank. But the third part, what you talked about, which is the digital bank of the future, is something that we will build, but not really on our own. We are building it through collaborations. So this place where you are currently is housing on the same ground floor where we had the museum talking about the past 100 years as to how the next 100 years of the bank is going to be, where we are building all applications with collaborations with fintechs, technology companies and other partners who will originate, who will develop the platforms, who will actually co-work with us to make sure that we are developing very, very superior products and delivering it to the market. Very interesting. Uh, you, you spoke about the kind of product innovation and the uh, you know offerings. And uh, we have some very interesting kiosks here, which I'm sure customers can use and interact with. These are all uh, you know demos, demos that we have uh, set up here. Mm. And uh, over a period of time, we'll be introducing them into the market. These are all AI and ML based. And each one of them have coverage of different products. And uh, you know, this whole arena is demonstrates uh, the vision uh, that you have for the future. But having said that, you know, uh, concerns about, uh, you know, data security, privacy, uh, these are all concerns those that are, uh, those one are has. Those are top of, uh, you know, uh, our mind uh, in, you know, and it will remain always because, you know, securing the bank, securing the customers more importantly, is our motto. And that's something that we will never compromise. We have the highest levels of security and making sure that you know there is no invasive opportunity for anyone to do this. And talking about where we started and I, I thought this was a wonderful place in which uh, we can actually end our conversation because it says here we started with Karnataka Bank 100 years of legacy began with serving the farmers and now we are ending with Karnataka Bank digital bank of the future. Tell us a little bit more about that vision. So the theme that we took for our centenary celebrations is actually banking with a legacy, but embracing the future. So what is the future all about? If you look at our homes, if you look at our offices, if you look at businesses, everywhere they are connected. So we are in the connected world. I know you have a busy day ahead, Shri, but congratulations once again on this important centenary and the vision for, that you have for the future. All the very best. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so sir. much for having us on the show. Karnataka Bank, celebrating a hundred years of trust. Media partner, CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.